Hello and welcome back to building web applications with Shiny and SQL. So just reviewing where we were in the last video, I had just clicked the, bu the delete button and I called the, the delete data function which deleted the record from the database and now I need to remove uh, the project name that was deleted from uh, from this drop down right so I delete it and basically what I do is I do a, a query and uh, reload this uh, drop down with the uh, current existing options right so for that uh, we started talking about this load uh, drop down function right it receives two fields uh, one of each one of one of which uh, it uh, is uh, the column with the project names and hidden you receive the project IDs that are associated with this uh, with each option okay so that's why in fields um, I actually get two fields then I get the um, uh, I get the table name I get uh, the sort by column of the two which one am I going to sort by that's what what gets received here on the sort by and the ID field is the field that the drop down is going to return uh, or which is going to be the hidden field or the the field that has the code uh, of the project right uh, the code or the project number for the option here that I'm going to select. Um, so basically the first thing I do is I do load data. Uh, load data goes to the database and retrieves uh, all the project names that currently exist. Let's um, take a quick look here, a review on load data. So load data receives as parameters the fields, the table, uh, which which of the two columns uh, or n columns am I going to sort by, and a where clause. Okay, if there's a where clause, it does it builds a query using the sprintf sprintf uh, command, select fields from um, from table actually if there is nowhere clause it 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 does a select from a table if there is if the where clause is not empty it does select fields from table and the where clause okay so that gets input into this string and uh, I use this DB query to send uh, the query to this DB connection, which we saw how uh, we opened these connections and did all of this on, on the previous videos. Uh, and then, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, I could sort uh, right on the select query, but I decided to do this after I retrieve uh, after I retrieved the the data frame right so I'm sorting in R using this order uh, command okay and I decided to do this way just to test and see uh, if it worked maybe a better option would be to to sort right in the select field or in the query I was just uh, playing around okay so going back to 10 So we retrieved uh, our list of valid names with their 
IDs. And then uh, what I need to do here is build kind of a header for a data frame that contains the options none and zero, right? Because what load data does, it just retrieves these valid names right here. And then I need to add this none option, which has a zero associated uh, with it. And that's what these lines of code up to here are doing. Okay? So it's basically building a header. And then uh, here I bind what we collected or we retrieved uh, from the database query. I bind the header uh, and this list data, right? Um, the header comes first because it's the first argument, and then I bind the list data to this uh, to this header that I built using these commands. I'm not going to go into the details. I mean, you can uh, do a function f1 and look uh, what each of these functions do, but then you can uh, simulate what is it that I'm doing, okay? Uh, once, once I um, have this, this header and the, data f and the list of projects into a data frame, what I basically do is I discard, I discard this, uh, the titles, right? And I put that into project lists. And then I use uh, the render function to insert this project list into uh, the Six Sigma uh, project ID uh, list box, right? Uh, we talked about how this output function works. So that's that's what uh, these two lines are doing. Taking the result, taking uh, what I built on project list, and it uh, inserts that as options of this uh, this drop-down and this here is the drop-down uh, title search by project name search by project name okay so here in function 11 is uh, where I update the fields when I do a search using this drop down okay uh, so how am I doing that I have an observe event on the changes of the Six Sigma uh, project ID field which is again this this drop down so anytime it changes whatever in, is uh, inside these curly brackets gets executed right uh, so the way I do that basically I use load data uh, which does a select uh, everything from Six Sigma Proj from the Six Sigma Proj table with uh, no sort columns where the Six Sigma project ID equals whatever is the value in the in the input text box or, or drop down right so it gets the value from here and uses that in a where clause to pull that record up and once I have the 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 record gets input into this variable and then I update each one of the of the controls by pulling the values from uh, this list okay so let's go to the next one so now looking at uh, how the update button works this this button here which saves the data or whatever changes I made to these fields uh, to the database okay 
So I have uh, an observe event on the update rack button. When that uh, gets clicked, this code gets uh, executed, right? The first thing I do is um, I do um, a save data, which is a function we're going to see up here, uh, and I pass uh, into it the results from form data and the table name. So what does form data do? Form data uses the list, that list that I showed you guys way uh, on uh, video three, I believe. Um, uh, that list contains the names of all the fields that I want to save uh, into the database table, right? So it uses the sapply function to iterate uh, through this list and gathers uh, each of the values on the on the inputs. Uh, the 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 values of of the names the values in this list match the names of the inputs and the names of uh, the table fields, right? So it gathers those values uh, and puts them into this data list, okay? And then I, I filter any, um, any values on that list that are either empty or zero, okay? And then form data returns this uh, data list, okay? So that then that data list gets passed to save data with the table name. So what does save data do? Well, it receives that list and the table name, right? I again filter uh, filter out any empty or um, zero values, right? Um, and here. Um, If the link, if the 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 this data view ob obviously is not empty, you know, it's not equal to zero. It uh, this is just a sanity check, right? It gets into this into this part of the if, and uh, what I do here, what this this is doing. Um, it checks if the value of the drop-down is either zero or no or, or an empty string and if that's the case I'm inserting a new record into the table if there is a, uh, a value right if there is some kind of value in this uh, drop-down it means that I have a record being shown on the form and then I need to do an update okay so then uh, uh, depending or on whether I have a value there or not I build uh, insert query statement or an update query statement and this pretty much works like uh, we've seen uh, before, right? So, 13. We talked about this. Okay, um, 
so 15 what happens is I'm just showing here how I load uh, these these drop downs right uh, they both come from the user table contain the same values uh, so I use the load data function um, I'm calling um, the the first column I pull is username and then the user ID I pass them as the field uh, parameter the table is users and I'm sorting by uh, username right and then uh, I I use kind of that logic that we talked about before to add a uh, none option and uh, with that none option I associate user ID zero so if you look here besides the names that it retrieves from the database this gets manually added uh, to the drop-down right so then um, I use the render function function to push that into the sponsor ID and here I do the same thing uh, since I already uh, uh, pulled the sponsor list and it's basically the same list uh, that goes on both inputs I just uh, do the same thing and I push it into the champion ID uh, into the champion ID uh, control and then finally uh, when uh, the user closes the form I use this uh, on session ended event to close the the database okay close the database connection so basically that's it I hope this was useful to you I know I couldn't find a complete solution out there and that's kind of what motivated me to to do these videos uh, probably would have been better to do this closer to when I actually wrote the code but then my exams came up and I ended up having to, to postpone this for a while. So get out there, develop some cool apps, and help make the community even stronger.